spoiler alert, the following video discusses content from the second installment of the Hatchet series. This includes scene ending and other important scenes. We recommend watching the movie before this review to minimize any loss of content. Disclaimer, we do not own the pictures, themes, or characters in this video. They are for entertainment and criticism and are reserved by the respective companies. Thank you and enjoy. Do you think anyone will notice it's not me? Uh-uh. Okay, let's... Go on. Yeah! Yeah! Hello and welcome back to Horror Harvest. I am Scarefrow with my good friend Edward here, and tonight we'll be showing Hatchet 2, the second installment within the Hatchet series, obviously. I mean... Uh, we should have just released, uh, well not just, probably it's been a week or so, uh, the first movie. We're just watching these in rapid succession to get a bunch done. Which we found out actually is a good plan to do because there, it, it, it literally cuts off exactly where it left off in the first one. It just jumps it, you right into the scare. Yeah, which is great. You'll probably notice that the last video was darker than this one. That's because we had to take a little bit time for a break. And then by the time we did that and the movie, the sun had just come up. So it's early morning. Uh, the... I'd like to start off on the point that it did leave off straight from the last movie. Like, the mm -hmm. very cliffhanger scene that it ended on last time went straight onto that and continued it from there. Yeah. Like, if you were to just jump cut, you wouldn't have even noticed that it that it uh, was two movies. Yeah, which was said, it sort of obviously gave us a startle because we're thinking of starting off the same one. I mean, it started off with, you know, the two guys yeah, and and was, in a boat, and now it's going to the exact same scene where he's ripped when she... Um, Always goes on arms, which she ends up getting away, which is rather. Uh, and it started with a jump scare too. It yeah. didn't enter in from her perspective or anything. It entered in on Crowley's face, screaming. Yeah. And which was like really threw you right into into the intensity of it. Yeah. And then from there, when she does escape, she meets up with um the crazy piss drinker. Yeah, we, we had an idea during it that he might be uh, Crowley's father, but we, it, it said that uh, yeah, Tom's he, dead. I really don't think that... Uh, but I feel like they might explain more about his character in the third movie, because he kind of le left some loose ends. So we'll have to see about very that. Very true. Like, I mean, there's still the whole cabin, which, you know... Because he, 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 he actually saw the daughter of um, Samson Thompson, Thompson, whatever his name was, I can't remember... You know, she was like, I don't want to do with you anymore. I mean, I think it was because of just killing gators and maybe it was... Mm -hmm. What bugs me was, uh, it left off, um, he had made some kind of deal with him, it seems. Because mm -hmm. he was saying, oh, it doesn't count, it doesn't count, like, uh, like, because he didn't know who she was. Mm -hmm. So apparently he, uh, had come to some sort of arrangement with Crowley. And that's where we first got the idea that it was perhaps his father, but it seems that's not it. Uh, we... But then again, the, we're going back to the notion we brought up in the first one. Is he intelligent? Because it says flat on the movie that it's supposed to be, where, you know, the child, retarded child's monster, which... Yeah, maybe he's... that's actually said by uh, one of the rednecks, is that he's retarded. Um, maybe it's just a story he's saying, or maybe he's reverting to the character which they don't really know about much, because it's supposed to be just a myth. But, obviously, it's not, because people are going missing and dying, and all this bloody goy fest love. But, overall and all, it was just... Mm, it's still, like... If he, he's, he's still capable of striking a deal with somebody so they can live in a swamp and not be murdered for some reason, it means he has some cognitive thought. It seems that he really does think, and often it seems like he's hatching plans, or he's like working through an intellectual kind of passage of thought. He seems like he's really thinking things through in a lot of cases. But then people will say he's retarded or that he... Perhaps he is. Like, simply he has retained all thought, but while he was alive he was retarded, so he still isn't very smart, but he can think. Perhaps, Maybe? and it's just... Well... Oh no! If he's smart or retarded, that's your eyes' stance. But it's difficult because I'm not sure if I would classify him as a, a woeful, but... like as a woeful spirit or as a uh, mindless spirit. There, there's quite the difference. That's... Obviously, he's woeful, but the point being, there's a huge difference 
between whether or not he is suffering and lashes out or what have you, or if he simply doesn't have a mind of his own, mm -hmm. so he uh, it just is driven by a malevolent force to do these things. Alright. Which, I think, because um, shortly after the um, intro jump scare, which is, you know, the um, cutoff, we do get a more sense of a main character being the woman who did survive the first initial attack. I, we I, go, hmm? You continue. I was going to say how she goes back to this, you know, um, Reverend Zombies Voodoo Shop and talks to him, and we actually get more of a deal on his character because they just briefly, briefly blew over him in the first one where he just made a real story of somebody almost suing him because of a boat. But, um, anyways, we're trying to find out more about his character and that. Um, the girl who was lived, it was his fa one of his father, Samson, who actually was one of the three people who m torched and actually was the cause of Victor Crowley's death. Yeah, which is good, because before it was just a tour group, which kind of, it messes with you that, because you don't have a center central character to branch things off. If you want a main mm -hmm. character or a small main group, but seeing how basically everyone in the story had their own thing going on, mm -hmm. it was like trying to follow a bunch of stuff. It was difficult. But when you have one person, then you can branch off the story and everyone easily by their relation to the main character who you are following. And that's made the second movie much easier to follow, much easier to oh, yeah. uh, to work with. And has allowed the second movie to also branch out into much more story and detailing that I don't think was capable of being done in the first one because of the way they set that up. I thought that the Shaggy-like character yeah. in the first one might, was the uh, main character because they focused on him more than other people, it seemed. But at the same time... He didn't even do much as, as for the story. Like, he was just a tourist there for Mardi, for Mardi Gras. He, and yeah, he didn't experience really have the a, local customs. Like, he, the whole... He didn't really have a story arc of his own, though. So, it was like... Yeah. It was just like... Follow the faceless group. It, Follow which, the faceless group, but and then... it set the groundwork that we needed. And if you're going to watch it as a series instead of just as a singular movie, which we do recommend, because as I said, second one is already very good from the second one, and it seems to be following a pattern with, uh, you know, cutting off when a direct point and then falling back up as you know. Speaking of cutting off jaws. Why? Yeah. There's there are a ton of death scenes that involve jaws, and it always focuses on people's jaws. And it's not just in the first one either. You know, we had the woman whose mouth goes. It's not just that. We have some people, or you know, in this one where just talking about the story himself, he's like taking a jaw, ripping it right off. He puts the guy's head on a table and just smacks his head off once again right by the jaw. It's just. He yeah. Maybe he doesn't like people bad mouthing him or talking bad about or him. Or when I don't they know. he used a uh uh. What what's it uh, the, the the saw thing to grind down the mouth? Oh yeah, yeah. it was a uh, oh what what's it called the uh, buzz sandpaper thing? I uh, know what, what you mean. Uh, wh whatever it, he he buzzed off someone's jaw and it, it always comes back to jaws. It seems it just it I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe it's just that the uh, director or the writer or what have you just thought that's the scariest thing to rip away from someone. I but mean, frankly, they did some scarier things when two guys got a chainsaw directly yeah, right up in there. Yeah. And, yeah, was, and, I... and it did not make it subtle. You saw two bloody balls drop. Uh, I guess it was probably time for drop. them, but... <laughs> Anyways, and we're not just talking about, you know... This was one gigantic chainsaw, which was once again actually about whatever. But anyways, and they lifted up in the air by the chainsaw and they're just getting the like, force of gravity coming down uh, and, and the chainsaw going up yeah it was not nice it was not a good time for them Ugh. and then there was the guy got his head cut off while he was, was having sex, sex with the woman and the spasm just... from losing his head went into pleasuring her yeah. it was funny because she just starts and then suddenly he, he just stops hey to... hey that was a test small of that entire night of hers <laughs> she thought he fell asleep, asleep. And right then... afterwards and just like and then she tries to crawl away when she sees what happens and she gets uh what happened was is, well she got the moment of life and then the axe basically went south and <laughs> split it basically made both holes into yeah, one. She it was, was she was crawling and Crowley just right, right up under where been. the skirt would have gone, but I don't think she was wearing one. Probably and not, especially because you know 
I felt pretty well she was, but anyways, it did end once again for a few other smiley, hilarious, okay, actually the one was pretty funny, you know, the whole spasm, fuck, come on, that was just like, yeah, that was, you just, that was funny, go from like, oh man, yes, I so love you, to, yeah, she, she kept bugging that guy, because they're having sex, and she, she isn't saying anything sex or anything, she is pushing him, she's saying, uh, do you love me more than you love Jesus, and it's like, he goes, that's, a, that's, a, that's not appropriate. And he flat like, out says that's not appropriate, and I agree. That is so Especially if you haven't seen it for a while. Uh, say right now, atheist, but still. Yeah. Ugh. That's that's still just, especially since I said, you haven't seen him in a while. This is the first time you probably have see, you know, seen, talked, hell and fucked. And you're trying to say, oh, do you love me? Do you love me more than you probably, you're, you know, your celestial being? It's like, that's... It's almost like she's clingy, and she was, like, obsessive over him for the entire period of not having him. But, all in all, the... And you, so, the, the story development, I'd like to say. It yes, was much great. more intense than in the first one. Mm -hmm. There was long scenes just dedicated to showing what happened in the past. Uh, the basic storyline, I, I think we explained it in the first one. Crowley died because he was born uh, with all... Uh, Basically, Chunk from Goonies. That's how yeah. he looked. Except I don't think Chunk was... A, I would really love to believe... I don't know if I said this in the last one, but I'd love to believe that Chunk from the Goonies and the and Crowley are the same guy in different, like, timeline paths. The only difference is in one he got killed by the children and in one he befriended them. I, I would like to think... Oh, the children! For the children! It's by just, the children! Killed by the children! What? I, 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 I have no clue where I'm going with that, so that's... Uh, that might be... Anyway, moving right along. So we hear from um, Reverend Zombie, the tale of, obviously, Tom Samson murdering the children yet again, but it also explains um, Crowley's conception, whereas yes. Tom Crowley, who got a good section, his father, uh, had a sick and dying wife. wife. And yes. then he started... Uh, having relations, relations with the maid relations. while his wife was dying. And her, the, his wife not only... It was actually basically in a side room, so I think she's pretty sure she knew flat out that she was basically, she was getting cheated on during her death. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, when she did finally die and pass, they started making out right next to her deathbed. Who the fuck does that? Which, and, of course, turns... No, no. Uh, I mean... Uh, I mean... You know, I have at worse. least enough common courtesy to screw my whore outside of the room with my dead wife. <laughs> and she didn't do it on the deathbed with her. Just like, hey, push her off the dead. We the gotta use this. We gotta get it dirty. <laughs> but it's like, I mean, at least, at least it wasn't that bad. And oh, don't oh. you? You don't get your whopping stick now, do you? It's in the other room. Ah. Anyway, the, I don't uh, even know why you smack me in the head with that thing. This has a freak. This is like a freaking helmet. Uh, carrying on. The uh, wife comes back to life briefly to curse them, and I'm not sure if it was a spirit that was angry at the adultery who had used her wife as a medium, because that would probably make more sense than her coming back herself and just happening to know who Dowin spells and such or just after a, coming back. Or just a curse in general, because... But I mean... I mean, why would she know that stuff? Granted, she is in New Orleans. We are in New Orleans. Yeah, say. it's New Orleans, but you can't just... We can't just that, assume that. Especially you can't just also, assume someone knows voodoo, let alone a, a powerful spell to curse a fetus and... Wait, first of all, you have to remember, she also don't have to bring it back to life for that brief moment as a spirit. So, it's first of all, you have to raise yourself up from the bed and from dead, curse this baby fetus, and then you have to go back to bed. I would it's rather like believe... It's, it's that their adulterous actions pissed off a spirit. I will believe that as well, because it just makes more sense. And I think using the woman as, like, a medium is more of, like, a shock to Tom to say, like, hey, this is your... You're going to have to pay for reactions. I really knew what you were doing, and it was just... I wonder if spirits ever, like, haunt animals, too. I'm not sure. Or maybe, like, possess animals. Like, a dog gets hit by a car... And then it gets possessed by a spirit and runs off. Something like that. I'm not too sure, actually. That'd be an interesting point, but... I mean, why not? It's a free body for the spirit. 
Very true, but I'm thinking you have to remember how able it is. Like, you know, the human, you have to pose with thumbs, you know, the actual... Yeah, but a dog that gets, like, euthanized or something is still quite able in some cases. Sometimes for the sheer fact that it was just a very strong dog with anger issues. And I'm not saying... Yeah, I Like, if it bites someone or something, I, so I get it. Some are wrongly like, euthanized. Yeah, some are very wrongly euthanized, but if it... it you know, I'm not even going to go into my morals there. Man. They, simple enough. Dog gets killed for biting someone or what have you. That happens. Spirit could take advantage of that. Take the able-bodied dog with the powerful jaws and have some fun wreaking havoc as zombie dog. I would watch that show, would you? Zombie dog. We have to make it and make our own review of it. But we have to make it first. Quickly, get the camera. Anyway. We're the, uh, as we said before, the redneck guy at the meeting said that he was retarded. I don't know if he was being insulting or what have you, because it's just really hard to get a beat on uh, Crowley as, uh, like, what he is. I, I think if anything, was, they even throw in a comparison, which I find hilarious, to uh, Jason, Jason Voorhees. Voorhees. Like, the guy's like, who's this Jason Crowley fella? And they're just like, oh, he's just some retarded child story. Oh, like, he's like, like who's this haunts the swamp and that? Oh, hey, Jason Voorhees? And he's like, us, uh, sort of. And it, I mean, it is like Jason is that he's a repeating spirit who's just angry and vengeful. I mean, I mean, if we want to look at the characters like the all of the mercenaries and what have you, yeah. there were quite there were quite a few. There was simple redneck guys that just wanted to go there and go hunting. Some people who wanted to get the swamp back because it, it is shut down mainly for the reason of obviously the story. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it might also be maybe for, like, um, oh, they might be animal protection. They all go there and help hunt the guy for the sheer fact that they each get $500. And if oh, yeah. they bring back the guy's head, they get 5000 Come on, easy so money, easy money! Basically, it's either if he does exist, then, $5, you, then you hunt him and you get $5,000 because you're hunting with a bunch of people, you know, if you're prideful enough. And if you don't believe in it, then you're getting a free 500 just for going out hunting overnight. I'd take the deal, would so, you? Yeah, what? I mean, I mean, I think it's obviously the fear is, obviously, if you fear or believe in them, or Victor Crowley, then you would obviously probably repress yourself and probably not take the deal, but it's like... Yeah, a lot of people didn't take the deal. A lot, a lot of people left as soon as he said Crowley. As soon as Victor Crowley, half the crew, move up, one guy's still asking for his cookies and even asked for milk. And yeah, there was this one guy that kept bugging him about cookies. He was just a dick, as in every movie. Freaking, you know, talking to the but, girl who just came back from the island, seeing her mother, his father, or father, and all that stuff, just like massacred. And she, she goes like, "Yes, oh, you did like to make her swing in your boots." And what? And it's funny these people are just like being. It's just what's important is they all had their own motives, they all had their own reasons, and most of them ended up dying, as exactly. you would expect. The uh, main character girl, she lives to the end, as you would think, uh, and. Uh, Reverend was, Zombie, how much have we really said about Reverend Zombie? Not much, he, actually. Can he, I... he, uh, we glanced over him, because in the first movie, that's what they did. They glanced that's over him. him. They, But he has a much larger part. He's the one giving the 500 to each person and trying to help to get it. But what his actual motive is himself is he, he gets the yeah. land if he can get rid of Crowley, because if it's safe to use, he can use it for tours and such. Which is obviously illegal because it's... It's illegal right now because it's condemned. But they get rid of the threat, it's no longer condemned. condemned. He gets money. How's he going to do this? By get, by letting Crowley get his revenge. By killing Whoa. a member of the family <laughs> from each of the three kids. I think it was three kids, right? It was three kids, actually. It was... Who uh, who killed him with fireworks. Which ended up being Samson. Which burned the down the house and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Technically, his dad killed him, though. So you know. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean, yes, he wouldn't take you know, Captain Cowley. But, but you know, it's, it, it it wasn't his dad's fault. His dad was trying to help him. It was yeah, it was more of like I said, you know, it was a uh, victim of circumstance. He was trying to push the door to get out, and his father was trying to hack out the door to help him get out. But yeah, his I, face, I like how was... Tom Tom Crowley actually found God and began to love his son after yes. after all this, which makes me like his character a bit more. Make me like because before he was an adulterous asshole, but over yeah, the years he like... simply became a good father. I think it's also because he did find a little in his lesson, you know, what happened, and he found it, you know, she was because, like, this is my son, I should be, and he's like, which, we don't see much in action nowadays, you know, even if their son is not horribly deformed, people don't really care much for the children. Yeah, I mean, 
But he was alone with his son in the uh, woods, woods in a cabin that he hid his son away, not to protect his son, but to protect himself from the ridicule of the horrible ch abomination that is yeah. his son. Which is kind of mean, but he did grow to love, love his him. son uh, through that and tried to protect him uh, in the end mm -hmm. it, to, to every extent he could. He, mm -hmm. he was trying to help his son. Mm -hmm. And going back... He act, um, Rev, Reverend Zombie actually tells this woman that she's, he, she want, he wants a few people that she'll feel safer around if they went on the trip. And by safer as in the th two other people who had murdered um, J um, Dr. Crowley, which was Samson's, which is their father's brother, which would be um, the, little, the girl's uncle. And also, I think his name was Trevor? It was like a bigger, you know, more buff redneck guy who actually... Not gonna lie, puts up a pretty damn good fight with a monster. Most people just he, quick, get quickly killed. He yeah. actually tussles, wrestles, beats the guy overhead with a board. Yeah, most it's... people just get hit and dead or cut up or what have you. The monster comes in and overpowers. And uh, other people usually defend themselves by shooting at him or what have you. This guy, no. He went had bare hands, fought against Crowley. And I think that if he had a weapon, he would have beat him. Yeah. I, I think so. This guy... He could have become the guardian of the woods. He stays in there and just keeps Crowley from coming back. Fuck Slender, man. You know, this guy's just going to be just like, you know what, you want to terrorize my uh, children, was, I'm going to terrorize like, you. He was just like the stereotypical <laughs> Canadian lumberjack. Real big, big beard. Big just, it just, mm. yeah. And he was, he was tried to be a tough guy. He was kind of a dick, really. But, but I mean, once again, it's everyone like, was kind of a dick. So, yeah. And then later on in the story, you know, the... The, guy, the um, brother of the um, tour giver, actually, was the one who get, got him the job. The Asian guy from the first one, correct? Yes. The, uh, the, one, that, Jackson. the one that was really nice <laughs> but, and, like, sounded normal, but then ended up uh, going right. full Asian once they uh, crashed. His brother was pretending to be French. Oh, that ship's so I don't know what's with I, them in accents, I but... I don't even know. It's just, like, he's wearing a beret saying bon appetit by giving away free cookies, which are just name brand, which... Yeah, they're just, they're just chips ahoy. I, I oh. doubt they're even name brand. They're like that great value stuff. <laughs> great value... Which actually can still be good, but it's... Oh, they, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's, like, cheaper. <laughs> yeah, which, once again, being a, a current artist of a shop, I mean, it... it Probably that name. I love that, and I love how it's all of these big tough guys. But when they pass down the cookies, it's like take a cookie, take, take a cookie. cookie take one cookie. guy takes a, takes like extra cookies and stuffs it in his jacket and puts one in his mouth and passes it down. Just and like the guys just like yeah, yeah, cookies. Just all of these yeah, guys, are, all of these big tough guys are just enjoying cookies, <laughs> free cookies, and then the uh, I take free bucks. cookies. Come on, I mean, come on, man. Uh, yeah. What do you think you would take into the woods, like, weapon-wise, if you were to go in and you knew that Crowley was going to be out there? Well, if I heard the story about, obviously, if I heard, talked to him, the girl, and heard how she shot, you know, stabbed, and then burned him, I'd probably take some kind of cutting material, because, obviously, it's, I think if he's more, if I thought he's more flesh, he's more of a zombie, so get cut the head off, get rid of him. So I'd say maybe, like, maybe... Uh, or something like a chainsaw. I'd say a machete would probably yeah, was, be best. Because then you can also cut through the, fifth, the thick foliage of the woods. Yeah, as well, in in battle, it wouldn't be... Because uh, there's going to be a battle when you meet with this guy. Oh, heck yeah. And he's going to be using an axe. But simple enough, instead of just one point of impact, you can just swing and try to cut and what have you and try mm -hmm. to, you know, to an extent, use it like a practical blade, but it still has, like, weight like an axe. It's a lot like mm -hmm. a falchion. Uh, put up a picture of that. It's like a it's like a machete with a cross guard, and it was an old weapon that's basically mm -hmm. a mixture of sword and axe, and it's, ve it's very good, and I think machete shares the same characteristics mm -hmm. that I think would be best for a situation like that, because you got to hack his parts off. Yeah. Anyways, if you guys were to face up against Victor Crowley, what would you bring to the fight? Would you bring a gun? I don't know, flamethrower? Dark gun, BB gun, whatever. Let us know in the comments below what you would bring. Try to um, kill Victor Crowley. You still can, anyways, but you can still give a good shot. So moving right along. <clears throat> uh, I don't I know. Think, I think we're getting back to the ending, so maybe yeah, we should just discuss I mean, I think how we're the just ending. Yeah, we're about out of stuff, I suppose. 
the ending, uh, it left off on a cliffhanger where the girl, the main girl that we have been talking about, that does was what the first one, and what he should have been doing, just hacks his face in. Seriously, just starts smashing, and it's obviously fake. You know, they still, they're still using still in this movie, just like the last one, no, no special effects or any. Well, no, uh, no um, um computer generated yeah. special effects. It's all oh. dummies and fake blood and what have you. Which and she good, runs still. up and she just with Wales, the hatchet just... starts smashing his face in and frankly it's what everyone should have been doing take something actually even if it doesn't kill him it disables him exactly he needs to heal if you completely destroy his face so you know smash it in Cut and it run in. exactly <laughs> what everyone... and the thing is is he even gets a gun and this time he just you know once again whereas the mangled mesh of a head used to be he just she just shoots and once, and that's how it ends you know, because of the, the last bang of the shotgun. My machete point brings up a question: yeah. Who would win, Jason or um, Victor Crowley? Victor Crowley. I mean, they're both immortal spirits condemned to a certain area, so it might depend on where they're fighting. But they're both condemned to a woodsy area. They are hideously disfigured spirits who were criticized for being that. Loved by their parents, at least one parent, one a father, one a mother. And technically both have, I should say, mommy issues. Yes, and both, uh, in a way, uh, have their own signature weapon. Machete, axe. Difference okay. being, hatchet. the uh, hatchet is, um... More, to, um, should I say Well, more? the issue with, uh, Crowley is Crowley doesn't, um... Crowley doesn't cover his face. Mm -hmm. Unlike Jason. Jason tries to cover his face, which shows more intellect mm -hmm. for Jason. Crowley really is just kind of rampaging a lot of the time. Very true. But uh, that is interesting. Also, as far as weapon choice goes, I say Jason. At least for the uh, battle. And uh, neither of them would win the war because they both just keep coming back. Would you? I do find that interesting how you're bringing it up because we've seen, you know, more horror movies, you know, clash like that. Like you said, Jason, Freddy vs. Jason, where it's like. I did not hear about the Hatchet series before obviously doing this, and it's like, now you oh, bring it up. It's my mother's favorite series, and she's going to see this and probably yell at me for getting things wrong. Probably. I mean... And probably going to yell at me, too, because... Any, but anyways, the whole match between Jason and um, Victor Crowley, as it long seems to be comparing them, because they have a lot of similarities. Very. And they even draw that comparison in this, but the movies flow very differently when you're yeah. watching them, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd say we're about done, don't you think? Yeah. So, as it seems, there's a prevalent theme that it just cuts off directly to the next video. So, if you're so going to be watching these videos... guessing we're about to watch the next part going on right after where we left off, if it does yep. the same thing. So, we are actually watching these, then doing the review, then watching the next one, then doing the next review. Basically, so that we have a fresh idea of the movie and only that movie at the time. So we're going to go uh, watch the third one, and you'll be getting a thing about that uh, in the future after all the editing and uh, all that stuff. Yeah, and if you like this video and other videos, go check out other ones. You know, if you like it much much, you might be like surprised. three Sky. other ones, at least so far at the time of this coming out, and more in the future if, you know, you're seeing this and in the you, future. And once again, if, what weapon would you use to fight Victor Crowley? Please we let us know in the comment section below and blah 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 please like subscribe share that stuff you, you know you've been on youtube long enough and you're a you, smart person and if you're new to youtube welcome to youtube so welcome to youtube stay with us how did you the find me if you are new to youtube lie. though because i how did you find me anyways the other channels lie just stay with us okay i think we're done well, I next think we're time definitely see done. you later okay.